Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another 2D hack and slash video. This is the actual part 25, I think. I think I said it in the last video, but it was actually part 24. In this video, we're going to be adding an enemy spawner object. So let's get started. Let's create a new object. Call it O underscore enemy spawner. And we'll just add a nice little step event. And in here, we're going to get the number of enemies that are in the room. Now, the problem is that currently, uh, well, there's, there's a couple different ways we could do this. Number one, we could create an enemy parent. Uh, and then have that parent, the enemy parent, inherit from life form, and have every enemy inherit from the enemy parent. And that is actually what we're probably going to end up doing, because that's, I think, in this scenario, one of the better ways to, to solve this problem. Uh, the other thing would be to get the number of life form objects and then subtract one, because the player is also a life form. Uh, but I think it's better to create an enemy parent. So let's create a new object another one we'll call this o underscore enemy parent it will have a parent of life form and then we'll give each of our enemies a, uh, this as a parent so I'm going to drag this up just above the night I'm going to drag our crow up to be below the night uh, so um, we can add children to this parent I didn't know you could actually do that but I just noticed it <laughs> So we can drag the knight right here. Oh my goodness, that's cool. Drag the crow right there. <laughs> and that's that's actually really convenient. Not going to lie. Um, so now uh, that we've set that up, we need to... There's some logic that we should move to the parent that's the same, and it's our end step. So let's um, cut this out of here. I'm going to do control X out of our night and we're going to override the end step here. Override event. We're going to paste it here. Okay. And then we're going to just delete this event here. Delete event. And now we inherit from now we're inheriting from the enemy parent. And now our crow, we just delete the end step event because its parent is already the enemy parent, and so we have now removed a uh, duplicate code because previously we had some duplicate code there, right? Everything else seems pretty good. We'll just kind of leave the other stuff the way it is. But now that end step um, is controlled inside of the enemy parent uh, for creating experience, basically, and we don't have to worry anymore. So let's close out of this, close out of our knight, close out of our crow, and now we can get the enemy count. So we can say var enemy count equals instance number o underscore enemy. Well, enemy parent. And we can use this to determine whether or not we need to generate a new enemy. So we'll say if uh, instance exists O underscore skeleton and enemy count is less than uh, where did we put the score like the kills score is that just in skeleton? Yep, it's just right here. Is less than o underscore skeleton dot kills. Um, divided by four. And how am I doing? How am I doing my uh, brackets? I don't know if I can remember to do brackets like that all the time. There we go. 
Okay. So uh, we're checking to see if our enemy count is less than the kill. So basically this will make it so that we create more and more enemies. Uh, so the game will get more difficult as the player's score goes up. So our, our enemy amount or, or difficulty, you could say, is directly tied to our kill amount. So we can say uh, if enemy count is greater than 5, exit. Now this caps our enemies at 5. I don't know why I did that, but it's in my source code, so we'll just stick with it. So we need to create an enemy now. Var enemy equals choose o underscore knight o underscore crow. So this will choose between our knight and our crow. But we want it to choose the crow more often. Um, and just a quick and dirty way to do that is o crow right here. So we have crow in here twice. So it'll be more likely to choose crow. Then we can say Uh, well, goodness gracious. There's some stuff here that, I've, that I have in this source code that I'm looking at that I'm not sure I actually want in this. So we'll say var uh, new x equals random range and we'll do 220 room width minus 220. So it'll pick a random number between 220 and room width minus 220. And then we're actually going to, man, I sure did this kind of in an interesting way now that I look at it. But basically, we're trying to determine where we create the enemies. And the way that I did it is a little bit weird, uh, mainly probably because I was in a game jam and I just did whatever worked. But we'll just we'll just use it. Um, while point distance new x zero object skeleton dot x zero is less than 220 then we uh, get another random number so basically while this point while this x position is too close to our current x position try again randomly grab another number and I think that should work fine uh, it's just a little bit of a weird way of doing it. So then once we've done that, we can create the enemy. So we just say instance create a layer new x o underscore skeleton dot y. We'll use the skeleton's y position as our uh, starting point. And then uh, we need to choose our layer, so instances. And then we need to choose what enemy to create, and that's just going to be enemy because um, we already chose it up here like that let's save and we need to remember don't forget to put this object in the room so come to the instances layer wait what's on our effects layer nothing so come to the instances layer grab our enemy spawner and drop it right up here in the top let's run the game and see if we can actually See if this works, if we get error message or stuff like that. Okay. That still gives me a whole ton of experience. Ooh, so our crows, because of, because of where their, their origin is, it's creating the crows really low to the ground. Because um, it's creating them at our current X position or Y position, I mean. So there's a couple solutions to this. You guys could probably think of a few. Um, 
Also seems like that enemy. Oh, goodness gracious. The spawner is working, so that's good. Um, ouch. I think the crow's hitbox hit the knight. Goodness, I'm leveling up so fast because of these knights. Like faster than I can collect the experience for. Holy cow, crows are going crazy now. But you can see we never generate an enemy on screen. They're always off screen. And it appears that we're never generating them like on the other side of this barrier, which is the other thing that we have to worry about doing. So, yeah, seems to be working. Let's change our knight's experience back down now, because remember, we just set the experience way high as like a test. And the original experience amount was five for the knight. Okay. So do we change the origin of our crow? Um, and just do like um, bottom center. I think we do. I think that's the easiest solution to this. Like what's the collision mask on the crow? I think we'd probably want to do manual for this and uh, adjust it a little bit. Something like that. We'll just save there. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Let's run the game again and see if the crows are created in a reasonable location now. Okay, now they're created way too high. Probably can't even hit them. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, they're really high up, aren't they? That's amazing to me that that's that it's that big of a difference. Oh, no, it's not that big of a difference. It's cuz I have some that I created in here manually, right? So let's get rid of those. We'll just have the one night Let's drag him over here a ways. And then we'll set our crow origin back down to a bottom center like that. And run it again. Let's see if they're in a good spot now when it creates one. Yep, there's one. And that's a, that's a pretty good location. As long as I can hit him when I'm doing the lunge. That. So I got to time one right. <laughs> it misses. The lunge misses. I was worried about that. So let's come back into the collision mask. And, you know, actually because of frames like this, we might want this to be lower anyways. Even though it looks a bit odd on the first frame. Come to like here. And it, this is just kind of... For this game, our collision, the hitbox on the crow doesn't have to be super exact for this type of game. It's like Mario, if you go look at the hit the collision boxes on the old Mario games. Oh man. So now what happens if we uh No this should work. This should work fine. Get out of here. I gotta try oh okay, we get we got this. Yep. Ah oh, darn.
Dang it. But there we go, we've created a simple, this is a very simple uh, enemy spawner, but it's very similar to the one, I mean, it's pretty much exactly, it doesn't have the boss enemy yet, um, we still have to add that in, but the but it's pretty much exactly like the one for the version that I did in the game jam. You can see how you can create something pretty simple, quick and dirty, it's 20 lines of code, and we've got an enemy spawner. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, you all, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will talk to you all later.